looking today to build on our knowledge of translation and the location of different points within the four quadrants to understand how to reflect shapes. First of all, as is often the case, we're going to start by refreshing ourselves with some prior knowledge. So stop the clock, sorry, stop the video um, and have a go at these fractions of amounts questions for five minutes, please. Hopefully, as you've worked through those, you've identified that we're dividing by denominator and multiplying by numerator, as we always do. OK, so one third of 30 kilometers would be 30 divided by three, so 10 multiplied by the one, so 10. OK, and as we go through these, we divide 24 by four to make six, multiply it by three to make 18. Divide 30 by three to make 10, multiply it by two to make 20. Divide 40 by 8 to make 5, multiply it by 7 to make 35. Divided 32 by 8 and then multiplying it by 1 to end up with 4. $25 erroneously popped in there. 25 divided by 5 is 5, multiplied by 4 is 20. 32 divided by 8 is 4, 4 multiplied by 3 is 12. 72 finally divided by 9 is 8 and 8 multiplied by 2, so 2 ninths of 72 is 16. Okay, so hopefully you got all those right. Well done if you did. Um, now, just refreshing ourselves from yesterday, we're thinking about translation to begin with. So translation is that movement idea where A um, is moved uh, two left and four down. Okay, so if you can start um, by looking at uh, the four coordinate points for A and the four coordinate points for C and write those points down. Um, Sorry, I've said that completely wrong, guys. Blah, 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 blah. Um, could you just, first of all, please, write down um, what the points are for A. And then if A was translated two left and four down, what would its new points be? Then could you write down the points for uh, the translation that would have happened for A to go to C? OK, so two elements. Pause it while you do that. Okie dokie, guys, once you've done that, um, you will see that the points are translating as we move them down. Sorry, it's happening a little bit slower than I anticipated. I apologize. And we can see the new points. Where we've translated it. So the translated shapes points are 0, 2, 5, 2, 0, 5, and 5, 5. And the translation from A to C, we can see that those four red crosses again are going to emerge and they've gone over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the left. And then we can see how far down they've got. So sorry, it's 9 to the left and 11 down. I apologize, guys. My screen went a bit fuzzy then. OK, so it's nine to the left and 11 down. OK, hopefully you've managed to do that. That's just a refresh us from yesterday. So don't worry too much about those ones. And I apologize. That I misspoke uh, with the instructions there. We're going to progress our learning now. We're looking at reflection. So first of all, um, you're very lucky because you get a little picture of me in the corner, but I'm sure you'd all much prefer to see an image of yourself. And that's very much what we'd be doing if we were looking at a mirror. OK, so our reflection here um, is uh, if we had a mirror, we'd look at ourselves. Now, reflections are interesting because they're not exactly the same in some respects. So if we look at this guy um, just for the ease of ease of naming. We'll call him Bob and we've got Bob and we've got Bob in his mirror. OK, so Bob in his mirror, the reflection of Bob. Now, in your head or out loud, if you want to talk to yourself or to anybody else who's there, what's the same about Bob and his reflection and what's different about Bob and his reflection? Just have a think. Pause it if you want to keep thinking. What's the same? What's different? So hopefully you've identified that his hand is outstretched. In reality, it's his right hand, but in the reflection, it looks like it's his left hand. The two are not the same side on each image. It's not his right hand. Um, and also, if you look towards his hair, it's going one way in reality and then the opposite way in the reflection. And you could identify, I'm sure, other aspects of this. If you look at which of his eyes is larger and things like that and the direction of his smile. So there's elements which are different, although lots of it's similar. 
Now here, we've got some images which are reflections and some which are not. So whether, uh, let's see, Terry, whether the pens, whether the cookies, the Smarties, oh, I've got two sets of cookies, sorry, the cookie jars, the Smarties or the cookies on plates, which of these of these five are reflections and which are not? And if you can figure out why as well, that'd be great. So just pause it again, have a look at them, see which ones are reflections and which are not. Okay, guys, as we look through these now, we can see that um, the first one is a reflection, so we can see the outstretched hands are the opposites. Um, we can also see that the pens are not reflective. The yellow pen was the one that gave it away to me. I don't know if you were all aware of that one. And also the red one, obviously. It's the same, but it's not reflective. If it was reflective, the yellow pen would be closest on both of them to the, to the dotted line. Um, whereas it, on this, it, the order is the same on both of them, uh, yellow, green, uh, blue, then red, yellow, blue, then red. If we look at the cookie jars, we can see that these are, sorry, now we've changed the uh, pen so that they are reflective. If you see that the red is now becoming in the middle, we can see the cookie jars are because the writing and direction of the cookies are. The Smarties we can see are not because the colours which are uh, incorrectly located. Now we change them and they do become reflective. And finally, with the cookies at the moment, they are not. But if we change the line of reflection, then they do become reflective. OK, so there's a line of reflection, that mirrored line. OK, OK, now we are going to thinking about our four quadrants again so with that first one that's empty to the top right uh the second one has now got a triangle within it so in the second quadrant we can see this triangle and this triangle we're going to reflect in the y-axis so that's the vertical axis which starts at the top of our page and and intersects through the middle of the page so we, we're trying to reflect the triangle in that y-axis okay so we're going to think about the same distance from the y-axis both sides but we're also going to make sure that if it were a mirror, that the uh, image that were posted in the mirror would be the same image as we can see on in that second quadrant. So because we're going uh, in the uh, the y axis, we're identifying that top uppermost point within the triangle is two away from the six. Therefore, we move two to the right away of the six to mark that point. We then see that the bottom uh, right point of that triangle is two away from the two. Therefore, we do the same uh, in the reflection. And then the third point, this is where we sometimes get confused. And this is why we need to be careful when indicating these reflections. The third point is um, four, sorry, five away from the two. And therefore, we need to do that five away from the uh, two line to the right hand side into that first quadrant as well. And then we can see the reflected triangle. Uh, on the translated, sorry, on the reflected version in the first quadrant. Okay. Having a think now, how do you think this parallel again would reflect? Okay, so if you were reflected, this would be in the uh, y axis. Can you have a think? Can you try, if you can, to plot or at least uh, record the four points which would be mapped? Okay, so pause it while you have a think about this. And then we'll go through it and we can see again. The, the distance from the y-axis um, is two, and therefore we go two to the first quadrant. Uh, there we can see, sorry guys, it takes a while pressing this. Um, it's three from the number one on the y-axis, and consequently it's three away from number one on the other side uh, into the first quadrant. Um, if we look again at that third point on the parallelogram, we can see that that's six points away from the one, and therefore when we go to yeah, the first quadrant is six points away from number one. And finally, we can see uh, the uh, point which is five away from uh, the number four, the line number four on the y, y axis. And there, that's five away into the first quadrant as well. OK, so then we can see the reflected parallelogram. So in this instance, it's still a parallelogram, but it's almost been flipped around. That's the idea of that reflection. It's been flipped around if it were a 2D shape. Again here, we're not, there's something that's different here. So just read the instruction and see if you can spot what's different. 
well done you all spotted it's the different axis so rather than the vertical y-axis we're now looking at the horizontal x-axis so we're still reflecting so it's still the same distance but that line of uh, symmetry sorry that line of reflection is now the x-axis rather than the y-axis so rather than going to the from the second to, to the first quadrant we're going from the second to the third quadrant okay and again if you work out by looking at that how far you are from the x-axis you'll be able to plot that it's two away and therefore, can you plot those new points? OK, looking at what that will look like. If you can plot it yourself, great. If not, we'll just work through it together. So again, the, the two base points are two away from the, uh, the X axis. And then we can see as we work through. That the uh, final point is six points away from the X axis and therefore the new point within that third quadrant needs to be six away. And then we met, join those four. Sorry, there's three there to six up. And therefore, we've got the triangle, which is the reflection. Now, on your sheet, guys, can you have a go at the first four questions? Pause this whilst you do that, please. <laughs> 